Last week, um, before I, you know, so, so let me just hook you in. I'm going to talk about coaching. You can get this sketch note if you direct message me um, on Twitter after the video. I'm going to talk about how we can get rid of graded lessons, how we can motivate teachers, uh, how school leaders can uh, establish a culture of appraisal that motivates teachers rather than measures them. Um, and I'm going to talk about um, an interesting piece of research by the organisation, De uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Deloitte. Okay, so um, firstly, last week, um, so I did a couple of my own sessions, which is always a privilege. So Archbishop Tennyson's in the Oval, South London, um, on Mark Plan Teach, which is probably the last time I'm going to do an event of Mark Plan Teach, at least my own anyway. Um, and then a, and a, on, a sec on the second day, um, coaching. And I had a teacher come to me all the way from Ireland um, who tells me that, no teachers ever observe one another, which I found fascinating and quite frightening that um, you can be isolated. There was no culture in school to want to develop. A lot of the younger teachers, new teachers to the profession who are immersed in social media and ideas for the teaching classroom um, are accessing all these ideas online, but within their own schools, there is a fear or reluctance to get engaged with teacher pedagogy and research. Um, so I found that very fascinating. Um, on Thursday, I went up um, to the Matrix Academy Trust near Warwick, um, with Eton College particularly, but about 50 middle leaders um, looking at Mark Plan Teach workload and curriculum ideas. So that was a um, great experience um, for me. I really enjoyed meeting um, those colleagues there. And then on Friday, uh, second year for me, I went to Wellington College, which is uh, uh, always a brilliant festival. Um, I remember years ago, um, not being able to get out of my setting uh, and always used to welcome the event being on a Saturday. And I know that's been reduced now for whatever reason, but um, if anyone's watching who went to the Wellington Festival of Education or people that are organizing it, can we get the Saturday back please? Because busy classroom teachers can't attend. Um, I know some people can get out of their schools and I know 85% of the people that do attend come from state schools. But we need to give that um, op option again for people to attend. It's a fantastic event. It's one of the best education events of the year, if not the best show and a few others like that, um, that are great for teacher development. So I do think we need to consider that. Um, and then this morning I've spent um, a bit of my day dealing with uh, a couple of troll attacks, people that are challenging some of the ideas that I wrote about my own experience. Um, 25 years in the classroom. Um, a time I wrote a book in three months, my first book, 100 Ideas, which is pretty much um, it saved me leaving the teaching profession at the time. I was redundant, my boy was born premature, uh, and it was a bit of a slog, but it was a great way to kind of pay uh, my debts, having been made redundant. Um, I'm looking at your comment here because it's sideways. Here in the USA, pay, pay is based on merit, how well the kids and, and how much they learn. Okay. Um, the kids don't care. Okay, that's interesting. So I'm going to talk about um, this model from Deloitte, actually, which I believe is an American organisation. Um, let me know. So I'm rambling on. Um, next week, just to finish off, I'm off to Haleybury Turnford in Chesant to work with the teachers on their teaching and learning conference. And then I'm off to Trumpeton Community College, one of my research schools, um, to go and um, look, introduce coaching to their teaching staff. So very, very exciting. Anyway, um, before I share the sketch note, again, DM me if you want a copy. I'm just going to share a bit of research that I, I'm going to use in my uh, new book. So Deloitte, an organisation, defined three objectives at the root of performance management for their employees. Um, number one, to reward performance. Number two, to see performance from a team leader's perspective. I can see a comment here. Not only a teacher, but my wife is the only reason I am commenting. OK, thank you for commenting and thank you for watching. Whereabouts in the USA? Um, to see a performance from a team leader's perspective, and third, to fuel further performance. Now, I've got another comment. I'm qualified in Scotland, there was a big emphasis on peer observation, great model. Um, one thing I've learned from Scotland is none of this assessment grid sheets with loads of numbers, um, and every teacher's a coach and everyone's qualified, and it's a wonderful thing that we can learn from in England. Um, Indiana, um, I've driven across the states. I don't think I, I, I I'd have to, this is 20 years ago. Um, I don't know if I reached Indiana, um, but through Pennsylvania, kind of Route 66 all the way to California. It was an amazing experience. I hope to come back. Um, teaching in Northern Ireland feels like backwards, crikey. Um, I have connected one or two teachers in Northern Ireland, and I fear that you know school pressures, funding cuts, seems to be quite a reoccurring theme. Um, 
if you put me in a corner and said, what do I think about England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, who are kind of the most happiest teachers, you know, in lots of different things, quite a, a, a broad claim to say, but um, yeah, maybe ask me and I'll tell you what I think. Anyway, let me finish this Deloitte before you comment. Their appraisal system was drastically reformed in line with objectives that asked a number of questions. Yes, you can watch the video back, don't worry. Um, so why don't you think of someone you work with and ask yourself these four questions. Given what you know of this person's performance and if it was your money, would you award the person the highest possible commendation? Okay, question two. Would you always want this person to be on your team? Question three, is the person at risk of low performance? And question four, is this person ready for promotion? So think of your school appraisal model, what questions you're asked, what evidence you have to demonstrate. Um, in effect, Deloitte started asking team leaders what they would do with each team member rather than what they think about each individual. And I think that's a really interesting steer with cognitive uh, science and psychology moving away from we disagree with people to more, you know, in their ideas to more re to more thinking about rewarding their performance. Now, in schools with metrics and all sorts of things, what improves teachers? So this is from us, uh, an idea in my the last idea in my book, Mark Plan Teach. I've been doing coaching for about five years in schools. Um, lots of schools now doing this model, getting away from graded lessons, getting away from appraisal observations. Um, I think I'm going to be five more minutes and moving towards um, motivating the staff through research inquiry. Okay, it sounds much more like industry appraisal than education. Okay, so let me explain what it might look like. So on this sketch note, you can DM me and I'll send you this. What it essentially advocates is get rid of graded lessons. Most people then keep the three appraisals, so one observation per term. I'm saying get rid of that also. Um, a lot of people will then maybe move to a what went well, even better if model of developing teachers. So I like this, you could tweak that fine, but it still recall, uh, requires an emotional type of judgment or as an observer, I like this, I don't like that. What if... Um, through coaching conversations that are structured throughout the year with one-to-one, -one, where all teachers could be a coach and all teachers receive coaching, is through better listening, uh, better questioning, we could steer the conversation towards when Ross, you, when you come to observe me in the classroom and I want to be better at X, so let's say it is stopping Ross from calling out in my classroom and disrupting the whole lesson, the coach would ask a number of questions to steer my focus towards solutions for that particular problem. Just one. Often in observations, there is a huge tick list. Tick list. If you message me through Twitter, private direct message after the video, um, I'll send it to you um, later. Um, you know, identifying your own thing that you want to improve in your classroom and then relying on the expertise of someone watching you with a clear focus, an agreed focus in advance before the lesson that's then tested at an exact moment in the lesson and then an agreed time to have the conversation after for feedback, but predominantly where the coach does more listening rather than talking and the teacher is steered towards their own solutions. Now in my experience and experience of working with schools all across the country in Europe is where people have used these techniques, not just my own, but things that I've learned along the way from many other people is that more teachers are more empowered and schools that are moving towards more research appraisal inquiry using these techniques, not just in the classroom, but through appraisal, where, let me remind you, people are rewarded for um, the four questions from Deloitte. Um, given what you know, and if it was your money, would you reward the person for their performance? And um, would you have them on your team? Are they at risk of low performance? And are they ready for promotion? They're good questions to ask rather than um, I'm looking at a number of pieces of evidence, progress, which, to be honest, is blighting the teaching profession. Now, the end of this month and next, uh, start of July, the Department for Education here in England are going to publish the workforce census. I, su I would suspect that more teachers are going to leave the English profession than ever before 
for the second year in a row and, and we have a slow motion car crash waiting to happen. I, I feel a lot of reasons for that, high stakes accountability, new policy reforms from the government from 2010. Um, also, I think of social media and web tools we can all teach in other ways. I'm teaching people through this video. For example, we look at social media, which is forming my doctoral research. Um, we look at how social media allows people to work and share ideas in different ways. So, you know, potentially I could just do loads of tutoring videos and people reward me or pay me for my time and I make a living that way and I am teaching kids, parents or teachers through this type of forum. Um, so I was at my doctorate final year conference last year where we met up with PhD students and fellow doctorate students and it was just a brilliant event. Um, and it reminded me just with one institution, so this has probably happened all over the country and in parts of the world where teachers, our researchers looking at policy, looking at reasons to transform the world of education. It's new territory for me but it's incredibly exciting. I feel very honoured to be in a position in my career where I'm putting uh, uh, an ed doc, so looking at theory and looking at teacher practice together to kind of shape my own thinking and contribute to the profession. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, so, there's the question. I'm going to pose them under the link of this video. Okay, I want your thoughts on that. And these will be in my new book, which is published in September, called Just Great Teaching. And if you want this sketch note, uh, message me on Twitter privately. I'll send it to you. Um, I'll kind of screenshot, essentially, let me just do a, a, co uh, a close-up of how you can establish coaching and how you can embed coaching longer term. Uh, and lots of you will be at different, different areas. Catalonia, oh, I love northeast spain i haven't been for a long time but thank you for watching um so that's me i'll put out a video next sunday thank you for watching um let me know your thoughts uh, and i'll speak to you soon